everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Arizona Cards Cast. It is, I believe, a Monday night, late evening. Um, we are just going to talk about some cool stuff today. How about if we get to it? So, let's first talk about the recap of the Cardinals and the Bengals. So, it's great that football's back. It's great that the Cardinals won 36 to 23 in a game that the Cardinals were up 36 to 9. Um, I would say the one part where we got beat was the kicking game. Matt Prater missing two extra points. A little bit alarming. Um, he was a little bit of a disappointment, in my opinion, last season. Hopefully he can bounce back from that. That was really the one bad thing, actually. Greg Dortch was phenomenal. Made an awesome circus catch. I was actually impressed with Trace McSorley. I feel like he's very accurate. He does have, you know, like a, like a Peyton Manning circa 2015 noodle arm and not the cerebral, you know, obviously ability of the former donkey and the cult great. Actually, you know what? Peyton, Peyton Manning must just have an affinity with horses because he just played on the horse teams his whole career. Just side note. Anyways, um, yeah, Fotu and Lawrence were both really good up front. Felt like got some good disruption in the run and passing game of the Bengals. Um, I feel like the Cardinals, you know, I know they're playing with backups, but they dominated the game. Um, and some of the players, as I said, Dorch especially, I think Dorch is definitely going to make the team. Uh, McSorley has a chance to make the team, too, with how well he played. Um, I'd like to see how he plays against his former team, the Ravens, on Thursday before we go there. But it was a very, very, very good performance by the Cardinals. You know, it was great to see. It looks like the Cardinals have some depth. I still am very concerned about the secondary. Marco Wilson did not play very well. Um, when he's supposed to be your number two corner, I need to see more from him. Um, the injury is a little bit concerning as well. The big question for everyone for the rest of the preseason. So the Cardinals have a game later this week against the Ravens. And the big question is, should the Stars play? Of course, nobody, none of the significant players, as I told you, were going to play or did play against the Bungles on uh, Friday night. But next week, um, middle preseason game, could we see the starters? I think Cliff Kingsbury is playing a little mum on this one, not wanting to show his his deck, I guess you could say, his hand. His hand, right? I think it's not deck. It's show his hand. Okay. Anyways, sorry. Sometimes words. Blah. Um, I have, have said, I think, um, Golden, J.J. Watt, Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, James Conner, some of, like, the star, Buda Baker, some of the star players of the Cardinals, I, uh, I don't think should play actually in the preseason. I think that they have had enough um, experience, tutelage. Um, all of these guys have been with the team for multiple years. I mean, Vance Joseph has been the D coordinator now in his fourth season. Cliff Kingsbury is now the coach in the fourth season of the offensive coordinator. I really think what do these guys gain outside of the risk for injury? Maybe a few reps, live reps. But um, I think the Stars should not play. But I know I'm in the minority. I know the old football fans like, hey, you got to play in the preseason to get fresh and ready and but, you know, that's just my opinion. I think rest them. Uh, obviously, make sure they're fresh in practice. I've heard Kyler Murray has been fantastic in camp, by the way. Who's this big old doofus right here? Yeah, that big old doofus is Thomas Edward Brady. So, yeah. Sorry. I know if you guys want to go to the next segment, we're going to talk just for a minute about Tom Brady. Okay. So, Tom Brady uh, left um, training camp last week. And there's been a little bit, like I'd say, a slight overreaction. Oh, my gosh, Tom Brady's going to be gone for 10 days, and he's not going to play in a couple of preseasons, but he's so obsessed with football. Oh, no, is he going to retire before the season? Is he going to make it back for week one? Calm down, everyone. Tom Brady, he probably planned something with his family, because remember, he did retire, at least temporarily, in the offseason. He probably planned something with his family that he promised in August and probably was already pre ordained with the team, hey, I'm coming back, but I'm going to need to take this time of camp and preseason off. I'm pretty sure he's going to be back by week one. I'm pretty sure he's going to be fine. If anything, I would just be worried that he's 45 freaking years old, and we've never had a 45-year-old playing football at a high level ever in the history of, I don't know, outside of Morton Anderson kicking footballs. That's about it. Or Adam Minitari, and even Adam Minitari, as he got, well, I think it was 46 when Adam Minitari started to stink. Um, so, yeah. Calm down. Simmer down now. History of the Arizona Cardinals Part 5 Recap. So this is the 2004 to the 2008 seasons, and I must say, the story kind of tells themselves. So hopefully I can, um, hopefully those of you who have read it enjoy me kind of storytelling, kind of 
reminiscing, but honestly, the Denny Green era, Matt Liner, obviously Kurt Warner coming onto the Cardinals. Really, the story kind of tells itself in this part. In this, I don't really have to embellish anything. Actually, I told about told a, uh, you know, the viewers about um, some of my personal experiences. You know, but uh, yeah, about the 2008 season. Um, obviously, you know, the big win of the Panthers, the big win over the Eagles to get to the Super Bowl. The 2007 season, a little bit kind of of a build up to hiring a Ken Wisenhunt. The Steelers passing over Ken Wisenhunt. Obviously, going back to 2004 to 2006, the drafting of Darnell Dockett, Larry Fitzgerald, Antrell Rule, Carlos Dansby. Um, obviously, just some great drafts in the 0405 drafts that actually kind of built up the 2018, who was not a great team, but kind of caught fire at the right time with a great quarterback and obviously a legendary performance by Larry Legend in the playoffs. But the Bears are who we thought they were! Come on, Duck! All right, lastly, everyone, uh, what we're going to be doing over the next two weeks, there's eight divisions. You know, I do four episodes a week. So starting today, we are going to do um, my predictions for the 2022 NFL season. Now, I made predictions on all the games um, at DrewSports.com back in May after the schedule came out. Went through week by week by week by week by week. So, but I get into the and I'm going to do it on every division. I'm going to I can change two games in the win column and two games in the loss column within the division, and I get to pick whatever team I want. So I'm going to stick kind of with my predictions back in May for the most part, but I get to make a little bit of a tweak in every division. So the AFC East, as you can see, I love the Dolphins this year. I think the Dolphins are going to be a much improved football team. I had them at 13-4. and four. Obviously, the Bills, they went 11-6 and six last year. The Bills are going to be really good again. The Patriots are one of, I think, the disappointing teams, almost a guarantee a team that made the playoffs last year are not going to make the playoffs this year. Um, like, just what the – like, Matt Patricia, offensive coordinator, really? What are you doing, Bill Belichick? I don't know. I think you're spending way too much time wearing, you know, wearing holy hoodies and hanging out with your new girlfriend at your home in Florida and not paying attention to football. You seem a little distracted, just saying. And then you got the MILF hunter. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, I did. Okay. Anyways, uh, sorry, kids. Um, don't Don't – uh, let's rewind that. Um, the uh, the mom the mom lover yeah the mom lover uh, Zach Wilson and the New York Jets pulling in the rear. The Jets are probably gonna be bad again. I know that a lot of folks are um, loving the moves they made in free agency. They're the Jets. They're poorly coached. Um, Zach Wilson's already injured. I mean uh, he's gonna be out like he got injured you know in the first quarter of the first preseason game. And the Jets, come on. They're the Jets. They're the Jets. So I get to pick two up, two down. So we're going to go two up first. And actually, I'm going to say that I think I undersold the Bills a little bit. The Bills are going to be one of the best teams in football. I'm actually going to give both of my upgrades and wins to the Buffalo Bills. So we're going to put the Bills at 13-4 and four on the year, which is going to be one of the best records in all football. So now I get to go two down because I have to take away two wins, and I'm actually going to just flip them in the Dolphins. I actually think... The Dolphins are going to be a good football team this year, but 13 wins with Tua, even though I think Tua will have a good season, no way. I can't, I'm can't. i just subselling the Dolphins a little bit too much. But I actually do think, uh, you know, Mr. McDaniel, uh, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, the Dolphins have a lot of speed on both sides of the football. They have one of the best secondaries in the NFL. The Dolphins are going to be a pretty good football team. The Bills are just going to be better, though. So the Bills actually win the division at 13-4. Dolphins 11 and 6. The Pats, I think the Pats are going to be bad. I wouldn't be surprised if Bill Belichick, I remember Cowherd actually predicting it. I'll give you a call. Like, I would not be surprised if Bill Belichick decides to end his reign. Uh, Mac Jones is looking very, very, very uncomfortable. Like, you know, uncomfortable like being out, you know, in a Vegas rainstorm. It is raining outside actually right now here in Vegas. Um, and then the Jets are going to be the Jets. Jets are just going to be one of the worst teams. They'll probably be the worst team in the AFC, to be honest with you. Anyways, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, Sue Drew. I appreciate your support. We'll come and talk more tomorrow. Have a good day.